and welcome to a very, very special episode of the On The Whistle podcast. Yes, myself and Zayn are lucky enough to be here at the Brentford Training Ground speaking to none other than Johan Wiese. Johan, how are you doing, brother? First, I got to ask you, you know, this is a Christmas time and it's usually a time for all of us, you know, in this country to have rest, drink, eat, chill eat out, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but... But for you as a footballer, have you gotten used to these, these, English, these English winters when you get no break, you play six games in six days? You know, how, how have you found the, the winters here? Honestly, nice. Nice. Um, wow. I wasn't expecting yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, from the French. Yeah. I can't believe it's <laughs> yeah. I'm that. No, honestly, it's nice. It's nice. When you're signing in, any day, you know, is um, Boxing Day. Yeah, yes. Everyone is waiting to play for this kind of, because for us, it's a party. So, yeah, everyone is enjoying. Of course, yes, it's tough to play every three days. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, everyone is liking, um, so looking forward to the boxing day. Amazing. Um, I have to ask you, this is your first AFCON that you'll be going to. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Uh, stress. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit or a lot? <laughs> uh, stress, stress. Because, yeah, um, you know, when I was born, I didn't expect to play football. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't expect to play uh, uh, for my... For my national team. Um, yeah, so yeah, really happy to looking forward. Um, my mom cried uh, two days ago when they oh, you there. When yeah. you go, when you're on the list. Yeah, when I was on the list. So yeah, so yeah, very happy to looking forward to play uh, my first half time. We're obviously Africans, and Alistair and I are passionate about it. But there'll be people listening out there who sometimes maybe see the Afcon as a distraction, or they don't necessarily understand the love you have for your nation. Could you explain to us? Just why you have that passion? Uh, they have the same passion as when they are looking maybe uh, England. Mm. Uh, the same as mine uh, when I'm looking uh, to go to Congo. Um, I'm proud, how proud to be, um, uh, to make my parents proud to play uh, because uh, it's a long way um, since they are born to come mm -hmm. to France, you know, come alone and doing the, the right thing, like to be, uh, to be in the right position to to be to have kids, you know, because it's not easy. It's mm -hmm. not easy like to leave all your family and going uh, on your own. Um, so yeah, I'm happy. Um, I'm happy to play the Afcon. I'm looking forward to, and um, and yeah, yeah, this is very very nice uh, experience. It's been like two two years. I'm waiting for for the Afcon now. So yeah, very happy. And and for you, kind of obviously, you you were born and raised in France, but how much? But your parents came over. How much like kind of Congolese mm. flavor was in the house? You know, how much how much were you able to kind of embrace being Congolese growing up? Uh, because we are a lot of family around. When we are raised, my family raised, we are a lot of family come over. Mm -hmm. Like they talk, um, I would say Lingala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the language. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we were raised and born like this. So yeah, this is how I like it. And I've been to Congo with my parents um, once. Um, I didn't I always feel like the love. Um, from uh, Congo, so yeah, there is no point for me to to think about the the rest of it. Yeah, that's so that's so interesting. And for you, when when you went back, was there you know a sense of of seeing you know family, friends, you know what was that like going being able to visit? I know you know you said it only happened once, but how special was that being able Honestly, to go back? Honestly, it changed my mind. Yeah, it changed yeah. my mind. Yeah, because well, how um, did they do that? Yeah, because uh, <clears throat> you know, whereas in France, um, everything is safe, everything is cool, everything is nice. When you go in there, mm -hmm. it's a bit of trouble. Um, but uh, like, yeah, you look your family, your grandpa, you never see them. Mm -hmm. So when you go in there, I was 12 years old and it changed my mind completely. Um, and yeah, I feel the love straight after when I've been there with my family, my cousins. Uh, yeah, of course, it's not easy for me to every time have them on the call on the phone. But yeah, it was more than my very trouble I've been through my family. Yeah. And, you know, this is a bit presumptuous of me, but I presume it wasn't regular travel to Congo because of expense and maybe accessibility to flights? Yeah, it's pretty expensive. expensive. A lot of expensive. It's very far. So that's why we've been only once with my parents. And after now, because I'm going uh, often, so that's why now I bring, the, I bring them with me. So, really? Yeah, oh, that's so, amazing. So yeah, it's nice. It's nice for them like to bring often because... Um, they were to be scared because uh, there is a war as well. Of course, there war. So, um, so yeah, now it's it's much, much, much better um, because I'm going uh, national team and very happy. But yeah, since I'm born, yeah, we mean only one time because it's very expensive, far, and yeah, you have to manage your uh, enough money to go there. Is is anyone from your family gonna planning on coming to to yeah. the Afcon to watch you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But um, now where we are, uh, it's San Pedro. It's a bit far. Yeah. Um, so if you go through the good says, you all come over. Yeah, all come over. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, of course, it's a nice country as well. Yeah. <coughs> very nice country, very nice weather, safe. So yeah, everyone is looking for looking forward. Yeah, you met, you mentioned the weather. Are you looking forward to be playing in because you know it's cold it's cold here, it's rainy here, but there it's it's hot. Like Ivory Coast is hot. Honestly, I'm shocked of the weather this year. Yeah. It's yeah. been nice. Yeah. It's, no, that's true. It's, honestly yeah, the, no, the weather's been nice yeah. of course yeah, it's raining, rainy, but, but it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> So you're look, looking forward to some sun yeah, in, in Cote d'Ivoire. A, 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 a bit of sun is, is, is good. A bit of sun is good. And kind of, obviously your path, you know, you're talking about how you, you never expected to be a footballer, you never expected to be in the position you're in. What was the process like of, of then getting that first call up and playing for Congo? How, how did that happen and kind of what were your, your feelings um, at the time? I was uh, in France um, when we get promoted in France, sorry. Um, and the second manager called me and he just asked me, um, what are you gonna think about it? Uh, if you can can come, I say straight away yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no straight thinking. Away. No, no, no thinking. It's not really because when I was um, young, when I was seventeen, I was I used to play with Chateau. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's um, like a school, and I write them on the on the computer on the Facebook mm -hmm. to tell like all my CV. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, and who did you send it to? Uh, I sent like to the big major. Yeah. Like, to, oh. to send to the, uh, you were ahead of your time as a contact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, this guy is ready. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was a bit uh, looking for a straight. I was 17, I think. 17 or 18. Wow. I wrote them and I wanted to play with, with the IC. So yeah, I was very happy when the, they called me and I said, yeah, yes, straight away. Mm -hmm. Even if it was uh, friendly, I said yes. Yeah. That was amazing. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, honestly, yeah. It was it's funny, you get these stories because even we interviewed uh, a guy, Roberto Lopez, who plays yeah. for Cape Verde, yeah. but he kind of grew up in Ireland. And he was saying for him, it was someone messaged him on LinkedIn because he made a LinkedIn account for school and then <laughs> someone <laughs> spoke to him. Yeah, there's not a story like yeah. this. There's yeah. not a story like this, of course. I love because, that. Because um, they're not like, they're not looking every players because I think it's hard yeah, a lot of, of players but yeah sometimes you have to try uh, to try to play yeah. uh, play your game yeah and then t take me back to that then you know you played a few times take me to that that first game the world cup qualifiers when you score at home wow. against morocco you get to do the fimbu in front of the whole stadium honestly, what was that like <laughs> tell me honestly it was the one of the best feelings in my, in my football career i never felt something like this um I feel like the stadium we go. Yeah, that is an amazing yeah. stadium. Honestly, big stadium, big fun, crazy fun, I would say. So yeah, you can feel the love football. They are living for football. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, the football was one of the biggest ever <laughs> thing. <laughs> so yeah, especially for the World Cup, um, we draw. But uh, yeah, although my first experience was the one of the best. Yeah, mm. I, can, I can imagine. I mean, I want to. Obviously, we're previewing the Africa Africa Cup of Nations. We're looking towards it. And one of the things that struck me about, you know, your group at, at DRC, because, uh, you know, I grew up in Kenya, I was born and raised in Kenya. So for me, I'm seeing this group and, and I grew up in Uganda as well, and, mm. you know, spent some time in Congo. So for me, I'm seeing, you know, in Morocco, ah, whatever, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about them. But oh, we, the exactly, yeah, they're, they're not. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> but for me, it's these three neighbors, because you've got DRC, Zambia, Tanzania, mm. all neighbors. And I know, I know the rivalry, particularly Tanzania and, and DRC, you know, even, you know, you players on your team like Fistin Maele going over to Yanga and yeah. playing, you know, even we call Yanga as DRC junior, you know, it's all Congolese guys, yeah. there's yeah. rivalry there. For you guys there, and even I've spoken to Tanzania, they're saying, oh, look, the game against DRC, that's the one that matters. We have to beat these guys. <laughs> they're, they're, they are, they're, our, they're our brother and they always say they're better than us. <laughs> yeah, of course. So for you, how are you feeling about it? <laughs> Honestly, yeah, of course, every game is special. Um, yeah, when you got a weapon in your heart, yeah, I can understand. I can understand that like, you want to beat uh, this kind of different game because yeah, we are neighbors, but um, yeah, every game you want to beat. So you are not focused on only one game, but uh, Hopefully we're gonna win uh, the the Afcon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, this kind of game is always special. But and and for you guys, there was even a point where you know qualification looked like it might be might be in doubt. You know those first two games, mm. you didn't get the results, and then you know Sebastian de Sabra comes in. One of the things that struck me speaking with Congolese guys about them is he's saying, you know, we love, we really like him as a coach. Um, because he's embraced being Congolese, you know, he lives in Congo, he's, you know, not like what these Europeans who stay and then come for an international yeah. break. You know, what has it been like 
working with him and how has the you know the mood of the team been since that you know you have the world cup loss and then the struggle at the beginning of the afcon to now suddenly everything is is going well like what how has that been working with him um, and in the team i think the main strength for him like he knows the history of congo mm. he knows the history of congo he knows um, the history of the to play mm. as, as a head coach of national african nation so he knows the tricky things to do mm -hmm. and like like give it a time you know and uh, he's very good as a coach to give it freedom um this is how you can express yourself this is how he do that he's very good at talking as well so yeah he's a very good uh, very good guy very good person and very good coach yeah i and kind of i wanted to you know we talked a lot about the kind of the joys of playing for for congo you know and one of the things you mentioned is kind of the tension in, in in Congo, obviously, growing up, you know, we I, I grew up on the Congolese border in, in Uganda. That's where I was, where where my parents lived, and we had to evacuate because of the violence yeah. and stuff. And even now, you know, we just had this the the elections. When I was speaking to some Congolese guys, they even said, "Look, no one here is, cares about the Afcon right now. We're just thinking about the elections." And you know, there's tension, everything. But everyone I spoke to, they said, "Look, we're thinking about the elections because they're yeah. difficult. They you know divide us. But as soon as the Afcon starts." We'll all be turning on our TVs. We'll this all be is, watching this. The, this, this is what it means for them, football. Yeah, and for you, yeah, how, well, yeah, what does that mean for you? Like to be that, you know, that person who's representing the nation. You know, hundred million people. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, like who, you know, there's there's issues in the country. Whatever is going on, everyone yeah. will stop. They'll turn on the TV. Yeah. They'll watch the that, leopards. That's the diaspora yeah. across the world. Yeah, that's uh, that's why um, I love African African nation. I love when the guys represent country, even they are playing like for the big teams. Because um, in Africa, everyone turning the TV when we play. So they love football. Um, the only thing that matter for them is football. Yeah, of course, election is causing trouble. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's really, really important for them. And it's really important for us to give 100% of yourself. So yeah, that's why we are looking forward, and we need to be, we need to be strong, very, very strong. And yeah, of course, you have to be proud because hundreds of millions of people is a lot of people even around the world, around the globe. So yeah, looking forward to We've just interviewed Frank the Tank Onyeka, your teammate. He's very confident that the That's Super true. Eagles are going to win. <laughs> he's, he's, he's put it out there, right? So like, I want to get your take. Is, is he right? He <laughs> guy's a liar. <laughs> he's scared. <laughs> 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 as soon as the camera's off, he's yeah. panicking. Because no, right, Super Eagles fans expect it. Yeah. And, and, and for you, if, how, what would it mean if you came up against him in, in the, yeah. the you know, quarterfinals, semifinals, if you played Nigeria? Um, I would be happy. Yeah, you'd be happy. I would be happy to play against uh, these very good team, very good players. Uh. Um, of course, it would be a tough game, but uh, I won't say we're going to win 100%, but I won't say that we're going to lose like 100%. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we, it's going to be a, a tough game for them um, because it's not going to be easy. But yeah, we have to say humble. Um, it's not easy off count. There's game every three days. There's a good team. There's a good player. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, of course, everyone is willing to want, want to, to win. But yeah. This guy is a liar. <laughs> the well, only well, thing I can say well, is a liar. Well, well, I'm going to be greedy and go for two more, if you don't yeah. mind, before the quick fire. Like, everyone wants to win the AFCON, right? Like, this, the is, this is why they're there, right? That's the thing. And it's so unpredictable. We've seen teams like the Camoros do really well. Cabo Verde. Um, wait, I'm forgetting one. Was it Madagascar? Yeah, Madagascar. Going, yeah, make a good run. Yeah. So, you know, you can get these teams that no one predicts and they go on a great run. Last tournament, Nigeria undefeated in the group stages. They knocked so out. Um, Algeria lost after yeah. Yeah, yeah, the of course, there is no chance. Really. No? And I guess my question to you is, what do you think would be a realistic goal for the Congo at this tournament? What would, um, w for, for where this team is at? What I think quarter final. Quarter final is a realistic one. Um, mm -hmm. And after you can see, football is going easy. It's, it's, going, sorry, it's, going, it's going hard and you never know. So yeah, quarter final is the main, main, main target. Um, and yeah, after let's see what's going what's going to happen. Um, we never know. Um, that's, so that's why it's good to play football. Yeah, and and Johan, you obviously were part of the Congolese diaspora that lived all over the world. If you were able to get your hands on that beautiful trophy in the Ivory Coast and lift it, what would that mean for you? And what would that mean for your mom 
We know that she gets teary eyed. <laughs> but like, what would it what would it mean for you and your family? Ah, a lot because it's a long journey. Um, it means a lot doing for because it's yeah, of course, doing for the country. But now I'm gonna do it for my family. Uh, it's different thing. Something you didn't expect that. Like uh, to be proud to feel like in your eyes of your parents, the, the proudest. So, yeah. I can't imagine because I don't want me to no, focus on that. Stay focused. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, you're going to be uh, a bit trouble in my head. Uh, but yeah, you just need to work hard. This is the only thing. Um, you can't all go over that sure. work hard because otherwise, um, you're going to be surprised. You're going to be surprised. So we need to be humble. Um, we need to be together because it's going to be a long journey. Um, and yeah, let's go. Sure. I know we're going on to the quick fire now, but if you don't mind, do you mind if I stick with one more yeah. question with the quick fire? So here we are. These are fast, quick answers, whatever comes to your head. So as Africans, we're all proud of our food. I don't know what the Kenyans do, though. But in hey, South well, Africa... We're very proud of our food. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Okay. In South Africa, we love braai, right? So that's like better than a barbecue. Yeah. Um, we had Frank the Tank on Yeka here earlier. He spoke about jollof rice. He spoke about his love for it. What is it for you? What is your favorite Congolese food? Uh, pondu. Pondu is like rice with uh, some some legs and um, and after that, sorry, I would say um, makemba is like a banana. Oh uh, yeah, fried mm-hmm. banana. Yeah, with, uh, a good chicken. Where, where, where can we get that in London? Where's the best place for that? Uh, in London, uh, you have to go around Tottenham. This is uh-huh. the people are Congolese. Oh, yeah, yeah Congolese do, food. do you have a favorite spot? Uh, no, not really, because mine was in Fulham, but now it, um, they closed it. Oh, oh shame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've never been uh, yet to, to Tottenham, but uh, my friend Bin, he's uh, is really, really nice. We're going to go try it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. for you, who is who's your favorite Congolese footballer of all time? Ooh. At my, when I used to grow up, it was Lua Lua. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest players. Uh, in the, at this time. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I got to ask you, who is the funniest team member of the Congolese squad? Who's the guy that has everyone in stitches? All of them are funny. All of them are funny. Going defensively, but all of them are very good guys. Very, very good guys. So I can't say like only one guy, but yeah, all of them are funny. Cool. And if, if you weren't, you know, you said, you talked about how you weren't expecting to be a footballer. If you didn't become a footballer, what, what would you be doing right now? What, what uh, job would you, would you want to be? I don't know, something normal. Um, I don't really, don't, don't really matter. But yeah, uh, something, something hey, you, like you, marketing, something. I was about to say marketing. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing his Facebook. I mean, he's already got the experience. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's that, uh, I like it. Um, I got, um, how would I do? Diplom? Yeah, diploma, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's some, from that, yeah, it's something like this. Yeah, yeah. fair. Well, let's see. One day when they make the Johan Wisser movie, who would you like to play you? Uh, who would I like? Uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe my brother. Your Your brother. brother. Is, he, is he a good? Is he a good actor? <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood. Pick someone from Hollywood, Bollywood, or Nollywood. Uh, <laughs> uh, who can I say? I would say like. Um, Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Ah, okay. okay. I liked it. I liked yeah. that. Denzel yeah. Washington. And with, with Frank, he was, he's telling us, because Zane, Zane's from South Africa, he's saying, oh, you know, I, I'd love to visit South Africa. So he's never been. What is the one African country you've not been to that you want to visit? Yeah. Uh, Senegal. Senegal. Mm. Why, why Senegal? Uh, because there's a lot of history about um, slaves, so yeah, happy to South Africa, happy to Tanzania. I've been to Morocco, I've been to Tunisia, um, Congo, um, yeah, nice country uh, to be in, yeah. The next one I wanted to be, it was the Ivory Coast, but I'm going here. You're going yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, next time is um, Senegal, yeah, with my family and maybe Zambia as well. Okay, yeah. excellent. Brilliant. Listen, Johan, you've been such a star. Thank you for your time. Yeah, we wish you well much. with the Congo. Um, and uh, just know we'll be rooting for you and for Frank. No, me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, for South Africa. <laughs> Not South Africa. <laughs> I'll never hear the end of it. Oh, you Kenya, should. You should. Kenya, you should. South Africa. Sorry, <laughs> Kenya's not even there to, to threaten you all, so there's no worries. <laughs> but, but thank you for your time. We'll be on my way. Enjoy. Thank you very Cheers. much. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you very much, guys.